everyone and welcome to another episode of Geordie Pride. Today we've got a wonderful guest called Dan Westwood. Now Dan is originally from Hartlepool and he's now a presenter and a radio broadcaster. His entertainment journey has taken him from his early days as a dancer, through to theatre shows, pantomimes and he now graces our TV screens and radios. However, Dan is not just an entertainer, he is also a very passionate ambassador for charities like Mind and Men Walk Talk and he is so dedicated to supporting men and opening up about their emotions and combating the stigma that unfortunately still surrounds mental health today. In our chat we're going to explore how Dan stays connected to his northeastern roots all the way from Manchester, his recommendations for those breaking into broadcasting, his dream interviewees and why embracing his northeast accent has actually shaped his broadcasting experiences. So grab yourself a cuppa and let's welcome Dan to Geordie Pride. You're listening to Geordie Pride, Voices from the North East. I'm Hayley and alongside my cousin Angela, we're thrilled to bring you the stories that share the heart and soul of the North East of England. Each episode, we'll dive into the lives of extraordinary Geordies and those who call the North East home, exploring their journeys and celebrating their achievements. From the time to the teas, from the arts to the sports fields, we're here to share the tales of passion, resilience, and of course, Geordie pride. So whether you're from Whitley Bay or Washington, Gateshead or Gisborough, or you're just fascinated by the spirit of the North East, join us as we natter with the best the North East has to offer. Dan, welcome to Geordie Pride and thank you so much for joining us today. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Thanks for asking me, you know, to come on board. It's nice. It's lovely to see you guys. Oh, our pleasure. Um, mm -hmm. So before we dive into your kind of professional journey and what you do, mm -hmm. tell us about the roots in the North East, where you come from. Right. OK. Yeah. So I'm originally from a town and um, it's classed as Teesside, Hartlepool, so people may be listening to this outside of Newcastle or unfamiliar with the North East. So, yeah, I would say in, um, in between Middlesbrough and on the way to maybe Sunderland, I would say. So Hartlepool, yeah. So that's where I, I grew up originally. Lived in London and Manchester since then. So, yeah, um, I'll always come back to the North East for work and things. But, yeah, that's where um, I'm originally from. And where do you live now? Manchester. Manchester, yeah. yeah, so it's not far well, from me. Too. Like, I'm up here quite a lot because of the BBC, um, the North East and the BBC, so that it's, you know, between the two. The best of both, shall we say. Yeah. So, do you want to tell us a little bit about your, yourself, Dan, and what you do day to day yeah. and, and how you got into it? Yeah, so um, I, I, I guess you could say I'm a, a TV presenter and a broadcaster in radio. I'm also quite a pr very proud mental health campaigner and ambassador in a nutshell i have danced previously um but i don't really do that anymore now so it's mainly just within tv radio or theater now and again like i've done a lot of theater shows and stage shows and panto and stuff and then the the flip side of that i do a lot of um campaigning for mental health awareness in particular men which i think is what very very much needed you know we get a bad mm. bad stick not speaking out um, certainly at the moment and maybe after lockdown and things like that where it's kind of rife and the suicide rate in general has gone through the roof but I think it's um, the numbers are quite high in men because we don't really speak out about things and I'm I'm part of that as well because I've suffered myself but I kind of I always say to people the irony with me is I I speak for a living but I couldn't ask for help you know mm. which is a fun thing for me to say now but then it's a, a passion of mine that you know I'll, I'll still carry on and I campaign now to get people to speak out you know and always checking on people mm -hmm. i think it's always difficult for men to speak out isn't it yeah, i think yeah. women generally chat about lots of different things yeah. but they don't i mean I, I, we've probably been you know brought up like that you know i don't know whether it's i've, I've had so many questions obviously I've, I've spoke on it on loads of platforms and it's very public you know with anxiety and my struggles with anxiety which i think i think again we need to i'll always talk about it because then when i'm struggling people kind of know you know, mm -hmm. so it's out there. But I don't know whether it is a where you've been brought up, whether it's a northeast thing, whether it's a working class background thing. But yeah, 
we as men get a really bad bad stick for not speaking out and you know maybe talking about our emotions or if we're upset or stressed about things you know, which yeah. it's a long fight but you know we gotta if i can do one thing we can change a little bit about that you know whether it's in schools or different outlets like this you know and get the word out and things like that and mm -hmm. being an ambassador and patron for different charities i think it's the one thing i can do with my job you know on the side of it and the good thing about it with having a little profile yeah, so what, yeah. what got you into that, Dan? Like in the first place? How well, you mainly because of my job and obviously because I spoke out about my own struggles, really, oh. and then obviously the two came hand in hand. And, you know, when, you, when you're when you working telly and broadcasting stuff, people want, like, maybe a voice or a familiar face to maybe come on board as an ambassador. Also, there's I'm, I'm quite passionate about it, you know, obviously because there's a deep-rooted, you know, it's not something that I'm just campaigning and I don't really, I've got experience in this, you know. So it's it's kind of I also know how bad it is, you know, when people are struggling, you know, the other to come out of it the other side and it comes in waves and things like that. So and I also know how easy it is to hide it. So you can spot the signs in people really. So yeah. um, just, just that and it's it became a passion thing. I was approached by a charity called Mind, which I, I think mm -hmm. I probably everyone will know really. Um so I'm an ambassador for them, and then it's just went on to a whole different things you know and um, men walk talk and an ambassador for them and a patron for an ace on so it's all wrapped up in all these different charities and i've just recently the last couple of years done a lot of work with zsa which is zero suicide alliance and in a nutshell they um provide free training from the nhs for anyone really to spot the signs of someone struggling you know because it's always really awkward isn't it you never know it's one thing someone opening up to you about whether it's a partner you know in, in your case ladies like it could be a brother or someone like that you know what i mean different things like that or a partner someone at work or it's one thing it takes good for them to open up but it's then it's then put on us for like oh, i don't know what to say am i going to say the right thing am i going to make them feel worse or in the other case of them maybe not speaking about it you may be looking at you know different behavioral traits have they gone quiet they're not responding to my messages they haven't come to work as much you know different things like that so they they offer that and it's great i always say it's like 20 minutes online and anyone it's open for anyone can do it and there's loads of different trainings there's one for veterans there's one for taxi cab drivers because obviously you, you don't think how many people mm -hmm. they and they could the the person that they're speaking to that taxi driver could be the last person they meet you know we all we all see it on TV, do you know what I mean? Where there's, it's like someone on a bridge or, and they, you know, you've walked past and you think, oh, I maybe should go back and ask how they are. And it's, I know that's televised and things like that, but just things like that, really, you know, and different things. I'm Amazing. championing that, really, because it's really, you know, and it's also free from the NHS. They do really good things, Zero Suicide. And it's they're, they're champion and their main aim is to get the suicide numbers down, you know, by us talking and getting that equipment out there for... You know, even just the, you know, um, like I said, knowing what to say, you know, and maybe asking if someone's okay. And then maybe if, we all do it, don't we? When we, if, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Fine. But then asking again and, you know, different things. And in turn, it's me speaking about my struggles and stuff like this. And even on outlets like this, it's, it's opened up, you know, a lot of people around me that didn't know I was struggling to maybe contact me. The same as the flip side of it. You know people that i work with and things like that they've since opened up to me you know what i mean i have a very good knit family and friends that help me and i have a really you know really close um gaggle i mean like gaggle of like two or three people that i you know you go to and things like that and they know um certainly a really good friend of mine key he knows he can like literally sense when i'm you know mm -hmm. down i've got people lovely people like him to thank for that you know what i mean like and that in turn keeps me doing what I want to do, you know what I mean? Because you're happy and, you, and then I can go to work. Because I've, I've done the stages of presenting where, you know, and being an actor as well, we can easily hide and mask our feelings, you know. And I think men men do that really well, but I think it's because we've had to, you know. Yeah, it's like yeah. stiff up our lip, isn't it? It's like, oh, you've got to get on with things and you're fine and don't cry. Yeah. Well, it's, it's seen as like, a you know, going into all that and, seen as like a masculine thing masculine and talk it's kind of it borders toxic masculinity you know like back in the day like generation thing the man was the head of the family the provider you're the support the strength you know what i mean but obviously all that's changed now 
and different things and it's well we like to think we've got equal rights and things like that i know there's a lot of work to do on that and stuff like that but there yeah i think it's been an engraved thing you know what i mean and you think of you know i've spoke to people in the past before and i've done research on this like people like um vets and stuff they have a really high rate of you know anxiety and suicide when I mean, you think how much pressure they go through a day you know what i mean of the different things they have to go through and even like in, in a masculine world like maybe on an oil rig and things like that they, they've they've kind of got loads of people to speak to but it's that butch world of you know the gents butch world on an oil rig about here but um and then it's kind of seen as a weakness you know what i mean or and, and i've had this with my work as well when you speak out about it that you're not fit to work or you're unreliable you know so it's a really big passion of mine you can probably tell when i'm yeah. talking and i've spoke a lot about and i think if anything i think i talk for a living so I, if it you know even from this chat if we can help one person throughout this maybe go and get some help or even do that training to go you know and you might see someone at work or you know a bit you know and they're they're a bit like you know distant and things like that or a friend and things like that because you know this is the thing with anxiety and depression as well it's, it's an invisible thing so we often give a lot more support and empathy to someone maybe who has a like a broken leg or something like that because we can see it we can't actually yeah. see it in his mind can we so it's i mean it's fascinating for me doing the ambassador stuff because it's I mean, and, and also in turn, even this, you know, I'm talking about my mental health every day, which in turn helps me. One of my main things is maybe to get it on the national curriculum, you know. I would love that. I would love that. It's so important. More, more support for people, you know, where, uh, you know, I, I've mentioned amazing places and charities that I work with and stuff like that, but there's not that many. And also there's not that many funding. You know, it's, it's quite hard, you know, when, when you think about the amount of people that are suffering to the amount of people that, you know are coming out with their struggles we're encouraging people to talk but sometimes there's going to be an influx of numbers of you know people coming out and struggling but then we haven't got maybe the the you know the needs and the vital things and funds maybe along the end with the nhs so zsa is a really good thing i you know it's 20 minutes you do it online and it's just like i'd encourage anyone to do it and i know i know i'm saying that as an ambassador but it will literally the next day you will think differently about how you you see things and you know how you you may be sure even kindness to someone because we're all about that at the moment isn't it just be kind and you you know it's and like i said one person on this chat if we can you know maybe stop them from having the dark thoughts and dare i say it, you know go into the extreme of thinking that's the only way out which it's not you know what i mean but it's it's recognizing those signs and thinking you know i've got you but then like I said, it's quite an awkward thing to talk about because even even when we say it now, and I say it a lot on the radio, people shudder with the word suicide because it's being given quite a bad stigma, the word, isn't it? And, you know, even mental health. I always say this as well, like going back to when I was little, mental health for me, maybe seeing, you know, maybe someone that, like, vi you vis visualise someone maybe in a straitjacket, which we've come a long way since then, you know. So I think... I believe it anyway, but it's maybe because I do what I do for a living. But I think talking is the best thing anyway. You know, if we can talk about things, it's you. You always, and we as Northerners, don't we? Talking in a cup of tea or a cup of, a cup of coffee or brew. You know, I think every anything's sorted, or you automatically feel better when you've had a a talk, whether it's someone maybe that you know, or even you know, I say a counsellor and a therapist, and I'm quite open about that. You always feel great, you know, talking about that and going right. This is where I need to. We pull back on things like this but I, like i said i've got an amazing support system of like a couple of a couple of people that i'm really really close to and i you know they're my rocks really so mm. i applaud people like that which again is what you need really but then you mm. can you can all, all, always automatically become one of these rocks of someone maybe when you've done the training because you'll know more about it and you'll know maybe you know the right or wrong things to say to someone you know yeah i always say it's like never underestimate just chatting to someone and yeah. like you say, sitting down with a cup of tea and just just having a natter and asking them seriously like what what's going on with you like just just tell yeah. us tell us how you're feeling and be honest and... Thing. yeah i mean i'm quite a chatty person anyway as you probably realize and i don't know if that's because i'm from the northeast but i'm a person in like if i'm in a coffee shop and i like someone's jumper or shoes i'll probably tell them but something as little as that can change someone's day you know what i mean and they literally yeah. need you don't know how their day is going or what's happening in their mind you know what i mean and it could if anything i always say you know it's 
it costs it's kindness costs nothing really does it whether you, and even whether you whether you mean it or not you know you can say you know it's better than saying a nasty thing or you know writing something nasty online or things mm. like that I mean it can mm. it can change someone's life just as much and their day rather just as much as a bad comment can really oh yeah definitely and unfortunately i've had a a male friend commit suicide mm. and mm. i'm very open about the fact that i've been suicidal in the past yeah, as well okay, been, yeah. i've had two experiences in the mm. past and same as you dan i like to just talk about it and i like to even just yeah, say too, the yeah. word yeah it, it normalizes it doesn't it really i think it normalizes yeah. it. and you know that the, the, the the fun, not that, well, I don't know if funny is the right word. The funny thing is, you know, everyone's going through something like this, you know what I mean? It's good. We don't know that people are because we don't talk about it. You know what I mean? So as soon as we start talking about things, you know what I mean? I know we've, I always say we've got maybe COVID or the lockdown to thank for it because mental health was then projected to the forefront of the news and, you know, papers and things like that. So but people, and also as well, people who were struggling with mental health and COVID and stuff, they knew how to uh, deal with it or, and also people who maybe haven't maybe suffered with their mental health kind of realized that, you know, it, it affects kind of a lot of us. Yeah. I think there was, there was a few silver linings of COVID and mm -hmm. I think mental health awareness was definitely one yeah, of them. 100%. Um, yeah. I do think it's the generation thing. I mean, we've got like, I won't even go into the social media thing now with, the generation because that's another wormhole you know yeah. what i mean I, I do i have i've publicly said platforms and even on the bbc and stuff i do think social media has a lot to contribute with the way the mental health people's mental health has declined because they don't speak about stuff and also as well sadly even just like you know you look at maybe bullying and things like that when i was at school people who were sadly bullied it happened at school but now it happens at home because there are yeah. And Every side, you know, oh. chat, things like that so it's you can't sadly you can't get away from it so it's i do yeah i do think social media but then i think we've got again like we've got a we've got to protect our own mental health but then we've also got a um you know a, a, a thing in a again with ourselves to know when maybe to come off social media i have breaks now and again from it you know what i mean because i do think it you do just have nights where you're just scrolling and comparing yourself and things like that but also maybe adults and stuff parents and guardians where you just think you should maybe monitor what kids are looking at and different things like that because you just you just never know do you you just never oh, know God. You can access thing 24 7 you can access oh now 24 7 and it's just you know you just have to look at different things you know where you see it in the press where people have been targeted or even sadly murdered you know what i mean with different things because of things that they've seen online you just never know what people are looking at really mm, yeah me and angela are, are both mothers to, to tween girls as well so it's yeah. like i mean i'm gonna I, i'm gonna say horrendous in the right word as in the pressures and stuff because even just that that world now going to school and having maybe mm -hmm. the right the right shoes or you know I would hate to be a kid nowadays honestly I would, well, I would as well and I just I, I I listened to a thing the other day and I it, it's something that I've started doing recently and I I've for a while but I a, an actress Olivia Coleman she doesn't really look at anything online because she's not strong enough to you know take mm -hmm. things and we we live in a world where people comment on you know famous people and people that they've never met before but they feel like mm -hmm. they know. and she made a good point out of you know she never looks at it because i think one sometimes someone said that she'd got she has like a really annoying face and she said it, it hurt me she's you know and she's an adult you know what i mean so i dread to think yeah. like i dread to think what kids are saying to each other and stuff because kids can be mean sadly you know mm -hmm. i know adults can as well but um yeah i wouldn't like to be living it at school now and stuff and applaud you parents and stuff because it's just as tough for you guys you know because you're the ones that have to deal with it when they get home or the you know the invisible worries that you have you know maybe thinking are they, are they telling me everything type thing yes yeah, constant worry yeah. <laughs> that's another story for another day <laughs> that's a whole new show yeah it is yeah well, you could do a podcast and that alone really couldn't you really? Mm -hmm. to be but i think that's just the world that we live in you know what i mean i think like that but then again going back to social media 
we could be it could be used for a good thing you know what i mean because you could talk to people on apps and there's chat lines and things like that and chat reels and stuff for support you know what i mean and even just like if you look at things like you know we're on about accessing things 24 7 the samaritans or something like that is an, a classic good example the other side of you know the internet's full of you know dark things and things like that but then if you've got access to something like the samaritans 24 7 that's a you know a bonus that you can tap into because a lot of charities including mine and i learned this recently they have like the mind umbrella is quite a big thing but then they have a lot of local minds so maybe they'll have like maybe you know mine newcastle mine darlington for instance an example but a lot of them some of them are run by volunteers so they'll be closed come five o'clock at night so they may not be able to help you but the the samaritans mm -hmm. is like 24 7 really so it's 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 a good thing to have like maybe access to good things 24 7 as opposed to you know maybe social media or even just it's a case of talking to someone like on their app or their their ex it's twi twitter but it's x now isn't it you know you know where someone can help you like a not a robot but someone at the other side can help you if you need help like that really yeah definitely we'll add all of these mental health links that we're talking yeah, about as well like, in the show notes yeah. it's not, it's not and you i'd probably talk about it anyway and it's not like it, it helps because they'll share all of this as well you know they'll share all of oh it. yeah 100 percent. yeah it's so important to talk about yeah. i think no matter what platform you're on you need to talk it helps about me it. as well like listen i love my career and i love my job and i'm very blessed you know what i mean i'm very lucky to do things but you know I've, i do have that anxiety creeping in now and again and i t talked about it recently on my radio show about self you know self saboteurs and stuff like that and you know um confidence and um even just the you know thinking that maybe we all have it where you, you don't think you're good enough to do something or you don't think you should be doing that particular job that you're doing and it's mm -hmm. it's it is a mind over matter thing and it's very easy to for me to sit here and say you know thinking things you know like it's like self-confidence and things like that but yeah i do like my job but then the the mental health side of it like i said it helps me talking about it every day because i'm yeah. here talking to lovely people like yourself about it which in turn you know that's it's like a baton thing you pass the baton but then i'm talking about my my own mental health which again recently i can quite openly say i haven't really it's been up and down you know what i mean but i'm i'm quite open to to say that you know because i've spoke about it a lot and made it quite public you know which in turn like i said help because when i'm not when i am down and stuff that the people that care about me know instantly yeah. yeah and rally around you when you yeah. need them yeah which is what and that's, that's what you need i'm very aware that people not everyone has that you know which is why why i do a lot of the ambassador and patron stuff because then you can direct people to the lovely people like that you know what i mean because not everyone has you know i've got lots of friends but i also have a lot of acquaintances and things like that work colleagues and things but i have a good like like i said one or two people that i like my rocks yeah but you might uh, I, just want to add to that really is that sometimes some people think that they don't have anyone whereas actually yeah. if you speak out you realize that there yeah, are that, and that's there. the thing really that's it's i want to use i probably irony is probably not the right word to use but it is one of those things that you you do think again you also think hand in hand with that you think you're the only person going through this in the world when literally you know um you could be you know there'd be people when people listen to this and stuff and when you are listening to this there could be people listening to this going through the same emotions in their head at exactly the same time you know what i mean there's people they could be wherever you live the people be in your street your next door neighbors your work colleagues you someone who sit next to you opposite your desk i've worked with people where because i've spoke out like i said i had a director a few years ago come over to me in rehearsals and he said i just want to thank you for what what you're speaking about because i've i've learned that i've been struggling as well and you know it's talk, it's just a talking thing really so yeah Ripple you, effect. you feel you're on your own but you're not you know what i mean even yeah. when even when you're going through those phases of loneliness and i always say because i suffer from panic attacks as well but i always say the feelings that you're feeling right now will pass because they've passed before and you've maybe the panic attacks i mean i don't know whether either of you've ever had panic attacks oh, unfortunately yes yeah. <laughs> almost like you kind of feel like you're having a heart attack and you'll know what i mean by saying that mm -hmm. um especially if on your left side i mean i had one recently and i didn't speak out about it which i regret um but i would encourage anyone to do that but again in my mind when you're talking to yourself and you think look well this has happened before sadly it's obviously sad that you have to go through it and they keep happening but you've got through it before and it will end and pass you know what i mean and then you'll be back to normal again so it's just it's just kind of again going back to the training it's just little things like that that you need to teach yourself to do you know what i mean mm. just that 
even, yeah. you know, sometimes when you're having thoughts, sometimes thoughts that you have are not real things or the things that I'm thinking are kind of not real thoughts or, you, you know, when you're overthinking, that's another one, you know, overthinking is a, an absolute, just mm -hmm. as bad attacks really, because you go, it's like putting the pressure on yourself or thinking of outcomes or the worst possible outcome before it happens. Yeah, I'm a big one of that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the poster for that, I'm, honestly, <laughs> literally. But yeah, again, what I'm saying is, like you said, it's normal. It's normal. To, yeah. It may not feel normal to you in that circumstance, but it is normal to feel like that. And I'm to, this. I'm talking to everyone, you know, however you identify, male, female, you know what I mean? I, I, I obviously have a lot to deal with as a man because so then I, I think it, as I'm flying the flag for, for the men, so I, that's why I make more an emphasis on male you know suicide and mental health because again we have there's a stigma attached but however you identify you know everyone has mental health problems it's just how 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 you a how bad they are or good they are or and how you deal with them yeah yeah and like you say the the males have got a bit more of a um i think that's it's just a stigma. Behind, it's a stigma isn't it you know it's it's yeah um, the stigma as well like there's the stigma with loads of different things you know what i mean it's i'm part of the lgbt community as well you know it's rife in that as well because we you know we've always been sadly we've we've always been outsiders you know what i mean because it, it, it's it's getting better nowadays and stuff like that but we've always had to hide maybe who we are mm -hmm. so you know, there's going to be mental health and issues and anxieties there because even we're not we've got a long way to go with that's the same as mental health and stuff like that but acceptance and things like that there's so there's a lot of you know, mental health issues within that community. But it, it can happen, like I said, it happens, it's a broad scale across anything really and anyone. Talking about, you mentioned um, you lived in London, you live in Manchester yeah. now. Um, what would you say makes the North East unique to those other, lo other locations? Because I think a lot of people um, in the North East don't necessarily move out. I know that it's, it's yeah. quite a, once, you, once you're born there, a lot of people love to stay yeah, there. Yeah, of course. And um, I like, I like, listen, I love that. And obviously, I'm like we, we said at the top, I'm, I'm back and forth. So I've got the best of both worlds as well. But there is a difference. I mean, yeah. it, it's a very wide thing. There is a difference of like when people move to London and then they move back and it's like, it's not for me. I've done the London thing. I don't know whether I could do it again, but it's not for me. I prefer like Manchester's another cracking place, but that's northern. So it's like a northern London. But then when I come up to the northeast and I like I grew up in Newcastle, you know, with my friends going out. It's where I found my, you know, my love of theatre and stuff. Cracking theatres there, like the Newcastle Theatre Royal, which again, mm -hmm. you know, again, if you're not in, if you're not fortunate, maybe, or you, you can't get to access London, they have amazing things that come to Newcastle. So it's for everyone. I also found my group of friends, you know, a part of being being a, a gay man you know what i mean i grew up in newcastle it's got an amazing scene there as well gay scene where everyone's accepted and things like that um and again i'm not not everywhere has that you know in the northeast i think it's i don't i spoke to a drag queen recently about this and i think it's because i mean we don't take ourselves seriously but we do if that makes sense to you so we're always when people are like it's like banter and stuff like that and northeast crack as 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 you say and, you know for listeners and stuff and that'll be it's like banter and jokes and things we're always the one that makes a joke about ourselves before anyone yeah. else does because i think that's part of you know the northeast gets a, a bit of a stick for that you know what i mean it's i mean it's it's people mourn oh it's too cold it's raucous everyone's <laughs> raucous. you know we just we just drink and things like that it's freezing no one goes out with any coats on which all of these <laughs> things are probably true which we love <laughs> Love, to be honest. <laughs> well, hardest names, that's why. <laughs> no, absolutely. Thinking, you get it all the time. And you ask anyone if being to Newcastle on a night out, and in particular the North East, but in particular Newcastle, because obviously it's the city. But oh, it's a great, people will be like, oh, it's a great night. Everyone's so friendly. That's what they say, don't they, really? So I think being from, being from, and going about, you know, helping people, I love to help people. That's why I'm like an ambassador. And personally, me being a presenter, it's because I'm nosy and chatty and stuff. But I think that. <laughs> stems from me being from a place that is well known for a people are really friendly and mm. be really chatty i mean how many people on a night out have been out in newcastle and you know they're from a different city but then they end up becoming best friends with whoever they've, they've picked up on the way or maybe like in bars you know like smoking areas and stuff like that because we do openly chat to people that we don't know 
whereas in London, it's a bit, you know, <laughs> it's warm. I think it's warm in answer to the question. It's just a warm. Obviously, I've I've grew up here, so it's it's what I'm familiar with. You know what I mean? I think also you know what you're getting from people. There's no judgment, but yeah. you know what you're getting from people. You know, my partner's terrible if I go up to people in supermarkets and say, "Ee, what's in your basket? And what's in your trolley?" Right. I mean, maybe not to that extreme, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it just doesn't embarrass me to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I, think, I think it's just the warmth, isn't that? You know, I think as I probably get into trouble for saying I say it on the radio all the time, the north in general, you know, but then obviously, and I am biased and I'm proud to be biased because you know, but the northeast in general, you know, it's just differently. The same as going back to theatres when I've got mates and stuff and they're on tour and they come to Newcastle Theatre Royal. They're like, oh, the audiences in the northeast and you are oh, they're so loud, lovely, really appreciate. <laughs> You no, know, so they love it. You know, I think it's just in general, really, isn't it? It's, it's warm. There's a warmth, and like I said, we know, you know what you're getting from people. Mm. Yeah. That's a lovely way to say it, actually, because we've done a few of these interviews now, and mm. it's like the one thing that keeps coming out is the like the personality and the mm. friendliness, and yeah. I think warmth is a really lovely way to put it, actually, yeah. because it is just that that care in nature, that grit and determination, but God would know how to have a laugh and take a piss oh, out of absolutely, ourselves. Absolutely, yeah. But I think, we're, like I said, we're the first to make the joke before anyone else does, because I think that's, you know, it's the wit and it's, it's, you know, working class and all that, you know what I mean? So we, they've had to, you know what I mean? Different things in Northerners. We've had a lot to go through. So, you know, and, you know, going back to people's struggles and stuff, you know, it's it's one of those areas, there's loads of places in the North East where, it's struggling towns and things like that, you know. But I think, again, what makes that place better is the communities and the morale of those places, you know what I mean? And mm. it's, I think there's no judgment as well. Like I said, going back to the warmth and, you know, there's no judgment as well. So when, you, when you're in Manchester or you're travelling mm. with work, like how do you, what, what is the biggest thing that you miss about the North East and how do you stay connected to your roots, would you say? Listen, I talk about this all the time, but I do love, I mean, it's very stereotypical. I mean, I love, like I, when I'm up here, there's a beach next to me, which is great for going back to like the mental health thing, out running, walking, you know, getting out there. Obviously in Manchester, we don't have a beach, we have canals. I'd rather be up, you know, near the coast and be on a beach and things like that, or even down south. If there's a beach there, it instantly makes you feel better. So there's that people, obviously family, um, I'm going to say Palmos as well, which is <laughs> yeah. a really stereotypical thing to say. The big <laughs> they laugh the best, like, what the hell is Palmo? Pardon? I mean, <laughs> well, Greg's is another thing, but I think Greg is <laughs> <laughs> And again, we're known for that, aren't we, really? Ooh. I think, it, it, yeah, just that. I mean, I love, like like I said, I grew up in Newcastle going out and stuff like that, and I've got a good, even now, solid good group of gay friends that we, you know, we're all a bit older now, so we probably don't go out as much. But, like, even just back in the day, like a Friday and a Saturday night going out and, you know, seeing everyone, seeing the same crowds of people, but being, and it was freezing, obviously, but, um, and seeing <laughs> you know and just the the vibe of it you know and different things and i think yeah i think that's probably the north east. i mean we do a bloody good palm oil, which we like but <laughs> that and i'm home cheesy chips on a friday yes i mean i'm probably i'm really <laughs> sorry I'm really very stereotypically northeast based here <laughs> i think it's but it's also a really good conversation i mean i had this recently like um I mean, not to think it, I was interviewing a, a guest on my show recently and they were in South Shields and I was like, whatever you do while you're up here and in the northeast of things to do, get a palm oil. I mean, I, I said it the other day to some friends who were in on tour and they're in Billingham. I said, look, you're near to Middlesbrough. I mean, I think they're going this evening to Central Park to get a palm oil, which I was like, Middlesbrough's the place of the palm oil. Are you going to go anywhere? But I think it's kind of, a, again, it's another thing that we're proud of, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Because yeah, you, you know, there'll be people listening to this who A'll be like, I can't believe he's just mentioned a palm oil, or B, they'll be like, What the hell is a palm oil? Yeah, they're googling it. Like, <laughs> well, it's you know what I mean? So it's just, but then they, they all have different things. But I mean, there's loads of things, really. You know what I mean? Even just when I like, I'm going on about um Newcastle lot, but Hartlepool, fabulous beach. I love that as well. I know I've got my family here and things like that. But even I get really, um, like a warmth inside, you know, when you go, when you 
see the time bridge and stuff like that because you're like oh it's all more different things and different iconic i know i've mentioned the theater a lot but the newcastle theater royal is a lovely safe space for me because it's where i go i've seen a lot of friends there i've worked there um and it's a safe space because you know you're gonna have a lovely time because if you like theater you're in there aside from that it's a lovely building you know mm -hmm. i mean we've got all these fabulous things in the city as well um a different thing just different things like that really which i know other places mm -hmm. like and stuff have but i think it's kind of it's what you're used to and it's memories isn't it that you go back to yeah you know i know i've got a lot of memories in manchester excuse me in different things where i'll be like you know i've been out a lot in canal street in manchester with my manchester friends but then i also have memories with you know going out in bars in in newcastle and things like that so it's it, i think it's memories and i think that the whole the the northeast holds them quite well for me mm. Mm. Like it's all of nice. yeah well it's nice kind yeah. of full circle i am back here a lot doing a lot of more work you know in the northeast whether it's radio i've just filmed something recently at darlington a, a big like campaign for their library i did eurovision there for them last year which again it's tying two things that i love in my work and also if it's even better when you're filming in the northeast mm -hmm. you know don't get me wrong when you're filming in public I know we're going on about chatty people and stuff like this, but <laughs> the North East are the worst for interrupting when you're filming. You know, I, I don't think they've grasped that yet. So you know, I can you imagine. Staring, filming, you know, a lovely little old lady interrupting, going, what, <laughs> you know, and it's like, well, I'm at work, and you've just, and you've just ruined that link. But, you know, it, it's just <laughs> nice. You know, it's, it's two of the, the things that I'll always, you know, I mean, I'll always, I'll always have, like, love and be here a lot and if i can work here a lot more than you know then i will you know and it's, mm. it's going on at the moment and different things so yeah it's just i think it's memories memories really yeah definitely i think it, you, you mentioned there you've done so many wonderful things in your broadcasting career have you got mm. anything that what what are your favorite moments and then i suppose as an add-on to that as well like mm. how did you feel as though being from the north helped you in your broadcasting yeah. career or did it or even did it hinder you like did you struggle well, more because you were well, yes and no really and a lot of people and there's a lot of people would say you know i mean obviously i i work on a few stations obviously some in the northeast and some outside of the northeast nationally where i'm i think yeah i think the breakfast show that i do i'm the only non midlands person on the airwaves which you know could be a good thing or could be a bad thing you know people either warm to your accent or you know or maybe you don't understand it but whereas in the northeast it's it's seen as a you know it's a i've recently just learned you know like, like me doing more stuff for the bbc and things like that um if i'm going to do it i might as well do it where i'm from because people a they're going to understand you and it's the warmth and the familiar like, like familiarness of it you know what i mean so different things like that but i have spoke to a few people and things like that whereas um like broadcasters and stuff and very well like well-known presenters and stuff where it's hindered them you know if they've worked mm -hmm. maybe for the bbc or news readers and stuff like that and they they don't want that accent but then on the other side as i think we said this it's war it's a warm accent whether whether you know it or not so then people instantly feel a, like they know you and they're comfortable within that accent you know what i mean they always have it people people are if you ask so many people i mean i'm i'm specifically saying geordie now but if you ask people their favorite accent i bet you geordie will be in maybe the top five or three answers because everyone loves mm. it you know it's warm for the northeast you know because it's warm but then um and even just if you look at telly and stuff they always like they always like if you look at castings and reality things like like maybe big brother they'll always have a geordie in there or someone from the northeast because it's mm -hmm. it's an area that we you know we celebrate i mean not hindered as much but i'm let you know you're learning to you're learning to love your accent a bit more and but then with my job i'll get like a brief and they'll be like we want a really i mean i get it a lot recently and it's it's something that i've had to get my head around they'll they'll want like a really warm northern camp voice that you know and they'll say that in a breakdown of things so it's getting used yeah. to that or they'll you know I've, I've lost jobs before where they're like we want northern but not specific like northern's a big thing really isn't it you know it could have could be manchester northern it could be at yorkshire northern but like i think we always pick people to the post because i think it is one of those familiar accents you know mm -hmm. that people know and love so yeah i think it's just just getting anything like i said anything i do in the northeast i mean like i touched upon eurovision that is probably a highlight because it was a eurovision it was for the bbc and also 
it was in Darlington, which I've done a lot for them as well. And like working in Darlington, Newcastle, Middlesbrough, wherever in, in you know, in the Northeast is always special. But when it's a job where you think, I'm really lucky to have this job. At first I thought it was a wind up, but you know, it's one of those <laughs> when you just when you're enjoying it. And also just lovely teams around you. I love my job and I love working with nice teams. You know, I say and a lot of people say this in TV and radio and, and don't mean it, but I like I like to like I've recently worked with a really nice cameraman that I know and I know I'll always have a, a good time with him will it'll be really chilled and easy on set no matter how much dialogue or we've got to go whether we film we were filming recently in darlington library which is quite tricky in a library because you're meant to be quiet and but then when the public are there and different things in the northeast it, it's just, it, i don't know what it is but when people see a camera you either get people whistling you know and different things you know it's those things isn't it but i knew going back to what the point i was making him as a cameraman he's from the northeast i don't know whether it's a bias thing but you know you're automatically i'm in good hands you know so anything i, I mean don't get me wrong I'm not, i don't want to tie myself down and say i don't want to do any work outside the northeast but you know it's it's always a plus when you when you're home you know because yeah. it's also going back on the i'm not very good at looking back on different things that i've done and it's all it's always when like people like yourselves ask it makes you stop back and think god i've actually done quite a lot of stuff and I, I am blessed I know that you know what I mean but you automatically think gosh I've done a lot I know quite recently in the northeast which again I love you know so long may it continue so really <laughs> what did you do first Dan was it tv radio well, I um I grew up da like uh, in, with my sister learning to dance so it was dancing first and I went to dance college in London so I went to like a stage school and then a college um so I did that so it's mu musical theatre dancing really and then I did a bit of acting um i say a bit of acting i still act now but um and then i just fell into presenting which it's kind of like for a while and even one of my mum's friends said recently she said you you know like in the last couple of years you this is what you're meant to do do you know when you don't you don't really i mean don't get me wrong when i was little i wanted to be a presenter and stuff like that when you see kids presenters on the telly and things like that you know but getting here i probably haven't got into the presenting as quick as I probably should have, but now that I'm doing it, you know, when you think mm, this is for me, this is my, this, you know, when you're meant to do something and you enjoy it. Yeah. And again, it's lucky. And don't get me wrong, if anyone's listening and they want to get into this, because it's, it is one of those jobs where everyone wants to do it. There's a lot of graft in it. There's a lot mm -hmm. behind and stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, you know, I'm classed as self employed, so people don't see the whole emails the no's the grafts chasing invoices which is my favorite um you know all of that really which i know a lot of self-employed people have but there's all that they just see whatever's being put on tv or radio you know they don't see all mm. this is where to love for people behind the scenes like makeup people you know crew sound people even when i'm doing like big live events they're the ones that they're doing a stellar job to make you even look good or sound good before you you know different things like that which i find fascinating like that so yeah it was kind of the dancing then i grew up in dancing i went to like a, a local dance school in hartlepool which is still going now um and lots of you know amazing people have gone on to amazing things from there and then Lon I went to london for that and then i've done quite a lot of varied work which again i, I like you know even now as a presenter i still dip my toe in and i keep reminding people that i'm still an actor still or you know different things and recently at the moment i've just got into like doing lots of voiceover things for adverts and things which again is lovely but it's all different i like to wear like different hats no day is the same either that's what i do you know be yeah. prepared for the hard work in the nose because it's you know but then no day is the same what's your, mm. the best? What's your favorite i do like i do like presenting because I think it's you just naturally I mean I find it easy I know it's not easy but I do find it easy to do you know and just naturally I like I have a, a natural interest in getting to know people and talking to people whether I've interviewed them before or it's the first time you know and doing things like this it's mm -hmm. so probably stems to being a bit, I'm a people person and nosy as well but I like to know people's backgrounds and what makes them them which is why I think I like the whole the campaigning thing because you, when you're talking about people's mental health more often than not what well, we've spoke about it today you, you're talking about their background and what makes them you know different things like this i mean i've said it before but i might do it in later years but i'd probably love to study you know maybe go down the therapist route because it's essentially i talk to people for a living anyway and you know and I, I know a lot about that so maybe it's something 
maybe do afterwards or on the side. I also really randomly love law and I've always wanted to study law yeah. and be like a, you know, like a barrister or a lawyer, which my friend said to me recently, it's kind of what I'm doing anyway, because you, you learn a script, don't you? You study your notes and, and then you go and not perform it. Well, you are performing in court, aren't you really? And just putting a case towards. So it's just one of those things. But yeah, I think presenting, don't get me wrong, I love acting. I mean, I prefer doing a lot of telly acting rather than theatre. But then there's that live buzz of theatre. But then I like the presenting stuff. I do. I like both of it. The radio's cool. I've met loads of fantastic guests, you know, interviewing people like that. But then I like doing maybe, say, for instance, like Eurovision we did. It was a it was a live big event, so a big live audience. But then we had cameras as well for the BBC and stuff there as well. So it was the best of both worlds. So Because it's always nice to have a live audience, like maybe when you're, you know, if you're doing prides or things like that or like festivals, because you're going to get, Half the time when you're filming TV stuff, you don't get a response. You just have to presume people are maybe going to nod their head or say yes when you're talking to them on TV, whereas it's a big live audience and there's thousands in front of you. A, it's great to see, but you'll instantly get a reaction back from them, which is it, it's mm. good live reaction, whether it's a cheer or give us a cheer, you know, different things like that. So, yeah, it's just – I just like it all, really, to be honest. I mean, oh. I don't even dance anymore now. It's very um, – it's very – um very public i've got a love of strictly come dancing so if that ever happens oh you never know you could be uh, replacing claudia and tess one day <laughs> well no i'd like to do it I, I think i'd like to do like dance on it you know and go on it and have a go at doing that i'm not saying that would be brilliant cool. but yeah, I love <laughs> we'll campaign for you down that's a padding so we're campaign that you're going to be Absolutely. on if i do get on it i expect <laughs> I want you leafleting around the northeast everywhere. <laughs> Posted from chip shops. I want everything. But also I can never, T-shirt. As much as I'd love to, I could never ever replace Claudia Winkleman because she's one of my heroes in presenting because I think she's absolutely fabulous. Her brand is she's instantly recognizable. And as a presenter, that's kind of what you want. Aside from the fact that A, she's an icon and everyone loves her. Mm -hmm. So broadcasters will be like literally like she could present anything and people will watch it because they love her and that's part of you know being a presenter and stuff like that it's people wanting to buy in what you're selling you know what i mean and different things and that's going back to the northeast really i think a lot of people you know we'd watch we'd watch maybe a lot of things because it's filmed in the northeast i know i'm a massive viewing fan but we'd watch a presenter from the northeast do a show that we maybe maybe not really interested in just because we like to support our own when people are down and having hard times we're behind them you know what i mean whether it's like a friendly joke you know from the football world or different things like that you just have to look at different you know mm. different people on the telly i think everyone loves the, the accent mm. really, which yeah, is good exactly. we've got it so you know it's certainly i would say it's certainly a new, unique selling point you know like different i mean i've had producers like say oh it's great you know what i mean we want more when i'm in the northeast i'll probably speak a lot more broader anyway i think you just naturally do that but um but then also like for briefing things like that a lot of people want to buy into we want to present a we want a you know i'm I, i've got a, a mate of mine marcus so he's the voice of big brother and he's from the the northeast and oh he, yeah yeah when we were talking because he's been helping me out with some voiceover things at the moment it's the same for ant and deck really i think ant and deck paid from here for a lot of people but marcus um and he probably listened to this actually because it's from the northeast oh, come on have you on marcus <laughs> there you go. i'll put you in well he's getting very busy at the moment because celebrity big brother's coming back so he'll be oh, sat in talking about like day whatever it is but he said the only reason he got the big brother gig was because they wanted a regional accent and the producer who was in charge liked the way he said chickens and that was it oh. <laughs> Chickens, chicken yes. weird, isn't chicken? Well, because they're going to have they had chickens back in the day, didn't they? In the Big Brother house. Oh, oh God, yeah. Well. Yes, so he right. said chickens, and he's like, you know, he's northeast accent. That he got a job, and like <laughs> all these years later, I mean, he's going back to it now. You know, with, with uh, series coming out soon, so it's like just the, stuff. Like that. I mean, that's a classic example of people just instantly going, "We'll have you because we like your accent," you know, which I think. Again, we're celebrating the North East. That's what it's all about, isn't it, really? I mean, there's lots yeah. to get wrong. I don't want people coming for me. There's lots of other fabulous accents out there. But <laughs> we are biased and we are going to support our own because it's what we do. 
Exactly. Yeah. Well, the That's show is nice. called Geordie Pride. Yeah, ah, exactly. Like you know, and, it, and it's nice to hear as well, because I think we've had a couple of conversations with people where we talk about the, the negative aspect of the accent, whereas I think hearing a story like that where people are yeah. getting opportunities they never normally yeah. would because they've got the accent is great. Yeah, and it's, it's always nice to hear a regional voice, or even if it's, yeah. you know, I'm, when I'm like, even when I'm, like I mentioned, I'm stood on stage in a lot of prides, you know what I mean? For some, when you're, and it's representation, when you see that on telly or when you see it, like, you know, he can do it on stage or he's he's happy being himself, he's happy being gay and, out, you know, queer and proud and stuff like that. I think that's another th part of the job. You've got a lot of responsibility, you know what I mean? You're, you're representing people, but you've got a responsibility. But that's what I like because it was just like, if again, like I said, helping people. But if one person sees me quite happy, you know, on a stage at Pride, having a good time and doing my job and talking to people, it kind of makes you think, oh, maybe I could do that as well. Or maybe, you know, maybe me being gay is not a bad thing and I'll maybe speak to my family and things like that. So there's all different things. The same as I've got, like, lovely people that I look up to, you know what I mean? In, in the team, like, my close people are friends, like my rock key, um, he'll love that I've said that. <laughs> but, yeah, um, supporting and stuff like that. But then I've also got people in telly that I look up to. You know, you mentioned Claudia Winkerman. Lovely. You know, people like that. You know, I, lo I love people like Roman Kemp on TV, Riley. Mm -hmm. You know, things like that, you know, Ant and Deck, classic example, but different different people like that where you look up and you think, you know, them being on TV and them being represented made me think, you know, I, I could probably do what I do because there's a lot of people do what I do, but I think there's a lot of, there's not a lot of people do what I do, maybe from the northeast or maybe from working class backgrounds, which I'm here to tell you that you, you know, if you you can do that, you know, you just have to knock on some doors or, you know, work a bit harder and stuff, which again it shouldn't be like that and i'm still going you know i've got a lot of work to do myself really but again but that's a you know looking at the other side of the the other side of the coin you know it, it's we're celebrating accents and stuff but sometimes you know it's that whole thing of you know when people go oh, you're from there you'll never do that or you'll never amount to anything and it's like why not you can insert any town or any place on that upbringing you know whether you've maybe had you know people have it you for having one parent you know you'll never you'll never do that because it's hard and it's like well why not as long as you work hard mm. you're gonna do it you know don't get mm. me wrong like you going oh i want to i want to i want to land on the moon that's slightly harder <laughs> but, you know it's like i'm sure you're the same as parents you know what i mean you've got to say to people you know we we spend a lot of a lot of time telling people things they can't do rather than what they can do or should do. Mm -hmm. mm. Or should you know again going on to the you know things People have a lot of a bad time about people who they should be, who they should love, you know, and different things. And it's rife at the minute. But I always think, well, you know, and it's people in power, sadly, that say all these silly things. But just think, as long as people aren't hurting anyone, you know, what I mean, who need to say that person can't wear that or can't, you know, they're happy. Not, mm. you're not happy and you're not hurting anyone. Also, it's only our blown business. So do you know what I mean? As long as you concentrate on your own things, you know. Mm. You know going back to the mental health thing if there is someone listening that's from the mm. northeast that wanted to mm. get into your type of career in broadcasting acting anything like that what one piece of advice would you would you give them don't do it no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> we love the people from the northeast listening to this of course there will be um I, I just listen i'm i'm very i've done a lot but I'm, there's a long way that i want to go you know what I mean? Like, I know I spoke about my mental health. That has hindered along the way, but it's also made me who I am. You know what I mean? Support is key. I have the best mum behind me, you know, like single mm -hmm. mother. The best, you know what I mean? There's no there's no ifs and buts and, like, different things of wanting to do. There's, I mean, don't get me wrong, not pushy mothers, because I know some people have that in our industry, pushy dance mums and all that. Never been one of them. Silently supportive and things like that. So I like that. That's there's very and the same with my grandma and granddad who are not here anymore, but there's that element of the support behind it, you know. And I'm not just talking about financial stuff because it is, you know, it's trips, auditions, even when you move to London, it's ridiculous, you know, and different things like that. But I if it's what you want to do, it's like anything, you could take presenting and replace it with anything if you wanted to be a chef. If you wanted to do that and you've got a passion thing. I my job now 
my job's not a job because I enjoy it too much. Like I've, this is this is classed as work for me talking to you girls, but I've loved it, you know, because it's not, not you know, and even when I'm, you know, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of train rides and early mornings and different things and no's and emails and admin and all that. And people don't see the the no's and the negatives. But I think if it's a hundred percent what you want to do, stick at it. I mean, become healthy obsessed with it you know like if you wanted to be a tv presenter and a kids presenter watch the shows that you maybe you could see yourself doing i.e maybe like cbb's or something like that if you want to but you know it's the same as i think it's turning it's a turning point at the moment i'd probably stay stay clear away of reality tv if you wanted to be a presenter because mm. of that. i mean but then it's also different at the moment because there's a lot of tiktok stars wanting to become tv presenters and stuff like that so it's all you know, which I'm learning because I'm not on that side of it. I, from the, I, you could say self-made, you know, where you've trained and stuff like that. And but I'm aware TikTok is the way the world's going now. So I, if, if it's what you want to do, you know, go out there. Like if you want to work in TV, become like like I said, obsessed, healthily obsessed with shows that you want to do. The same as if you want to, you know, if you wanted to be a chef, like look at your favorite menus and different things like that. I mean, I mean, like I said, I'm I've got a long way to go, and I'm still you know doing it but i like you know it's i love it you know i don't think i could do anything else mm. you know? yeah I mean, wrong some days you're like oh gosh you know but yeah. i think it, it, it's having the passion behind it you know if you there's no it's it's because it's bloody hard you know what i mean don't get me wrong it's a very hard radio whatever there's a lot of knockbacks and you know negative sides of it so you do kind of have to if you if you're not 100 percent in it i would say probably not because you will get up you know by any well you could say that in any job really you, you could have that in a board meeting if you're going for a promotion in a you know a big company that you work for you would you you need to be 100 percent in that promotion don't you all want it rise to the top of the the company or whatever but yeah it's don't get me wrong it's hard work but it's fabulous when you you know when it's good yeah. and it's the people the people that i've met you know what i mean along the way if there was one famous geordie person or someone from the northeast that you would love to interview who would it be i knew you were gonna ask this and i i've been, <laughs> I've been very lucky to have like interview a lot of people I'm going to say, I've already interviewed her, but I'm going to say I'll do it because she's always a, always a laugh. I have lots of lots of fun with her. I mean, I had recently, I'm going to say the dame that is Miss Denise Welsh. Because I knew you were going to say her. She's brilliant. She knows her stuff. You know, she knows her stuff. She's very, um, you know, um, you know, people see her as a loose woman, but she's a very good actress. She knows her roots of Newcastle, as in like where she grew up, and she's of that old essence of the old school. I know, obviously, she was married to Tim Haley, but like being surrounded by people of the old Geordies, you know, back in the day, like Jimmy Neal, Robson Green, mm. and she's got fabulous stories. And I always have a giggle with Denise. Like I said, oh, recently. another one we've got to get on the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> loads of like loads of good geordies and stuff that you could choose and stuff like that but um you know um i think yeah denise because and she's also done lots in her career so you've got a wide scope that you can actually talk about like the acting mm -hmm. i know people obviously see her as loose women she's got a fascinating story i know we've touched upon mental health but fascinating story about mental yeah. health her yeah. book i've read her book yeah. amazing she's been through it really but she's also yeah on the other side of it got a cracking personality and i always have a giggle with her so denise welsh i'm going to say yeah so it'd probably be a, an episode that would last about a good day i think <laughs> chatting to yeah well, I, we were on a time thing the last time i um the last time i like recently when i interviewed her because she was on a press thing so i only got 15 minutes with her but I, i'd say I most giggling and different things and she was talking about you know there's so much to talk about with you know someone who's done that much in their career you know and going back to the thing i like about my career is wearing all the different hats and denise has done that you know i mean mm -hmm. even if it's a backstory you know, yeah with the, well not so much on it you could look at the even with denise as well she's got a lot there's a lot of angles to where you could talk obviously talk about depression addiction that you know mm -hmm. the alcohol and things like that so there's all life lessons there as well she adores the northeast as well and she adores that theater aspect of like you know going back if you if you were saying to someone what you would think she grew up in that like setting that theater company up back in the day with like the icons like i mentioned like jimmy neil and robson green which we automatically look at as you know northeast like 
I'm going to say living legends, aren't they, really? Because we grew up with them on the telly. <laughs> you know, and I, yeah, it is bow down. But yeah, Ooh. she's also one of those people that I just, it's just fascinating. And she, she's got a story. She has a laugh. You know what I mean? She can have a joke. And, you know, so it's really nice. You know, it's an all round conversation. It's like this. It's natural. So before we uh, wrap up, Dan, we've yeah. got a little quick fire round for oh, you. I love doing stuff like this. I do actually like doing stuff like this. I love it. Good. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so and the first thing that comes to mind, and yeah, go on, Angela, like you can kick it off. Right. So, all right, quick choice here. This one's right. a really difficult one, this mine, Dan. Right. Stotty cake or peas pudding? Stotty cake. Yes. What? <laughs> <laughs> Next one. What's your favourite Geordie saying or word? Oh, um, belter. Do you know when people say oh, <laughs> belter? And it goes back from some of my friends say that or oh, purely belter. You know, uh, you know, different. There's there's loads. Like obviously, I'm obviously not a Geordie, but I've grown up with a lot of. You know, one of my really good friends, Simon. He he has. You know, even if it's just aha. Uh -huh, you know, when people go aha. Uh -huh, uh, we all <laughs> yeah. know what that means. <laughs> listening to this podcast probably warned, but even just go, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. No. <laughs> love that. I I it, it, you know. you're like, are you all right? What did you just say? So yeah, that, <laughs> uh -huh, if that is a word. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right, next one. What's your favorite? Um, hang on, what's my question? Your favorite top spot to visit in the northeast. Do you know what I'm going to say? I, I'm probably going to say the Newcastle Theatre Royal because, like I said before, it's a safe space. It's I love theatre. Cracking, you know, I'm always welcome there, you know, as someone from the North East, as they are with everyone. And, you know, I've got an interest in theatre, so you often, when I'm home, you often see shows that you maybe might not have seen, but I'm catching them when I'm at home. Also, as well, I get to take my mum with me sometimes as well because I'm there for work, so that's oh, yeah. a, nice, a nice little you know, nice little date for me and my mum at the theatre. So, yeah, I'm going to say the Newcastle Theatre Royal. Oh, lovely. It is a gorgeous mm. building. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. I'm going to, I've got one, but I'm going to slip a one in. It's not necessarily Newcastle. Right, every, but... even make them up, add them up. Yeah, I love, I love all of them. <laughs> I'm getting one it's sprung to mind. Let's go with it. Oh, if all you've mentioned, you've had some amazing guests on your show. Who mm. has been your... Let's ignore anyone that might be Geordie, like just yeah. anyone that you've spoke to. Who has been your favourite guest to interview? Do you know, I'm going to say it's a toss-up between um, Craig Revel Horwood or Anton de Beck, mainly because I'm a oh. struggling fan. Craig's fabulous. Love and, you know, them. again, fountain of knowledge. Also as well, and I've said this to I wasn't really, Anton surprised me. He was very different. And we, oh. uh, what I expected he was going to be. You know, and you in what way? Was so bad, as, as, oh no, as fabulous, as in, oh, like, you yeah. know what I mean? Which goes to show, you know, and strictly it's a lot of telly and stuff like that. You know, it's a lot of, you know, um, I mean, I'm, I'll go with Craig because he's a perfect example of he's the nicest person away from obviously what you think he would be on the telly. I mean, it's all mm -hmm. hype up and, you know, he's lovely. But yeah, probably Craig Grover Howard, I think. There's lo I've had lo so many. So many, like you know well i follow you on instagram and the amount of names that keep popping up of like who's on your shows and stuff and i'm like i mean it's lovely we get loads of really good guests coming up i mean i love katie price as well oh, right. she's i've had her on recently and she's one of those ones that she's also very misunderstood and i've interviewed her a few yeah. times now so you or and i every time i meet her and i'm like why wow, it's it's the She's very different to what the papers perceive her as, you know. I mean, always mm. lovely, you know what I mean. And it makes me think, why do you get such a hard, hard time, mm. you know? But yeah, I'll go with Craig Revel Horwood, but I do love him. <laughs> she, again, <laughs> to talk about, she's done everything, and she's also quite. She's a pro, and she'll play along with things, and you know, you'll you'll have a good giggle with her. But Craig's fabulous, yeah, and being a Strictly fan as well, Craig, you know, he he, he is Strictly for me, Craig. He's the longest survivor of Strictly now, yeah. isn't he? Or oh, is it and yeah. Tess? Is it him and Tess that have him and Tess? Yeah, him and Tess yeah. And is, I think Claudia is celebrating ten years this year as well. So oh, wow, she's not Goodness far behind. Me. Wow, the books are fab. Yeah, so, I also um, think also forget how many guests like when when you're doing them all the time. How many 
you've actually spoke to. I know you've just you're saying that, but you also think, God, I've spoke to so many really lovely people. You know what I mean? Yeah, From here, it's be amazing. To do you know who else is really lovely as well? And I've, do you know um, Alan Fletcher? He plays Dr. Carl Kennedy in Neighbours. Oh, he's, yes. Oh, yeah. Well, he's a good musician as well, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, lovely. He's a lovely man. So I just, I just, you know, it's like I said, we, we talk and we talk to them like I'm talking to you. Now we have a lovely time and we just so happen to be on the radio talking about different things, you know. So it's it's oh. just nice. It's nice, really. Such a diverse range of people as well, which That's is why nice. I want, It's one of the things that I want and I like about my career, you know. I want it. Yeah. Don't really want to, you know. I've had Premier League footballers on, which um, I'm not really into that, but I found it really fascinating because I'm learning something, you know. Mm. Same as like chefs and stuff like that. We've had like interior design. We've got some really, really good guests coming up. Um, that's not just to plug the show, but there is some, <laughs> you know, really good people coming up and and different things. You know, we touched upon it like quite recently. I had one of the Real Housewives on, and she was talking about ADHD. So it's different things like that, you know. Mm. I mean, I've had like different things that I wouldn't maybe tap into. I had a lovely guest on talking about the menopause, which obviously as a guy, we need to be up on that as well, you know, to support people around that. So just, to, it's 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 like a mixed bag, my The Breakfast Show on Gorgeous, which I like, you know, it's all your favourite celebs, you know, mixed in chefs and things like that, maybe drag queens, because people love that. You know, traitors, I've been really lucky to have some people from the traitors on, which everyone loves. So, yeah, I will go with Craig, though, because I just I did um, and I've interviewed Craig a few like in person. So I've spent the afternoon with him. You know what I mean? Oh, lovely. So it was nice. Nice, nice time. Oh, yeah, just pass him a tenner and you can get on the show. Well, we did speak about it, but it doesn't really work. He was like, it doesn't really work like that. He's just, <laughs> him suggesting, you know, him suggesting who this should, on the, should be on the show. But yeah, we'll see. We'll come in. <laughs> well, it, it kind of helps if, so, if you know someone, doesn't it? If you know someone, you're halfway there, really, I guess. He's, he's, he's going to recognise me if I'm ever there. So whether it'd be nice to me. I did say to him <laughs> if I ever if I ever land on the, the dance floor, but it's all <laughs> please be nice. Is that the last one? Is that the last one or have they got more? Next, I'll ask you this one, Dan. Go on, one last one. What, what's your go to at Greg's? Oh, do you know what? I'm gonna be I love a sausage roll, but I also love a vegan sausage roll. Mm. Like, mm. And I recently I've not had um, one yet. I've not. I'm going to say it. Well, I'm, again, you know, without it sounding an advocate or I've got a brand deal with Greg, I can't really say the difference and they're lovely. You know, I'm really, you know what I'm really upset with? That I didn't go to the the thing that they had at Phoenix, you know, the fine dining thing. Oh, yes. Yeah. My father in law went. He went I for it. Uh, I couldn't get in. Yeah, it was fully booked. I looked because I didn't realise it was like a pop-up that only lasted a month. Well, it was, and I, I was thought, like, oh, well, book it. Do it again. So it was like a fine dining thing, so you could go and get all your favourite Greg's, but like as in like Mitchell oh. and Star and a la carte, you know, dining things. I had to live it through Joe McEldry who went, and he was looking, he said it was fabulous. So that's good enough for me. So if it ever comes back, I will go. Oh, yeah, oh, I'd, I'd love yeah. to go. But that's yeah, the one that had like fondant potatoes yeah. and all these like posh roll or day. vegan sausage roll, I'm easy with that. <laughs> Not a lot of people know that. Can you that. taste the difference, though, Dan? I can't. I can't. Mm. To be fair, oh, you know, maybe I'll start and switch. Yeah, we'll have the to do a blind taste. Well. They're very well un, un, um, underrated. They do very nice hot drinks, Greg's, as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, Look, I love a hot drink. I mean, I love a Starbucks and a Costa. I'm sure we, we're allowed to say that on here, aren't we? Yeah. Um, yeah yes. well, um, <laughs> the brand deal of yet. <laughs> what? They do a nice hot drink, and certainly like at Christmas and stuff. Like mm. they've stepped up. I know it's competition and stuff, isn't it? But they've stepped up. They started doing, doing chicken burgers as well. I've, is that a recent thing? Uh -huh, oh, yeah, really? last week. Chicken burger. Mm -hmm. yeah, I haven't been for a while. I need to have a little look. <laughs> My daughter loves the cheese bites. They've got nice, really nice little cheese yeah. bites, and she loves them. Who yeah. knows? It's we love expanding. it. We love it. <laughs> I do love a Greg's, you know. <laughs> I love anyone, anyone that loves a Greg's, I love them, you know, because it's one of those things it's like a go to. If you're in a rush, you know, you're in a rush things, it's like a go to. 
<laughs> definitely um so before we let you go i'll just pass it over to you and you can share us anything that you want to uh, anything that's got coming up um and yeah, yeah. any lovely guests you've got coming up on your radio show as well any projects oh right okay so I, I, what i will say is because it's already been filmed check out the data so i did it we've done a, a massive um filming session with darlington library so I'm going to be, well, I am the face and voice of Darlington Library. They've got a new refurb, loads of money spent into it. So it's encouraging, obviously, people sitting kids to come and use the library. It's amazing if you can get over to Darlington. Apologies, you will be hearing my voice around the library and a lot on social media and seeing my face, whether you want to or not, on that. So I would, you know, Susie, who runs it, is amazing as well. And we did, we did like... It's coming out soon so that you'll be able to see loads of like, you know, like social media things. Also as well, I'm going to be when they've got school visits, I'm the person on the screen as as their, ho their guest, like as in telling the kids what they can expect and what maybe how to use different things in the library. So we've done all that, which is again, it's fabulous because it's like the northeast. I'm a massive advocate for getting kids to put I'm going to say tablets down and pick up a book and use your use your library so i'm looking forward to maybe doing some more things with them over pride so i would probably suggest that I'll, the radio is weekly and you just have to like look on my um as you do you know look on my social medias i'm very lucky with the guests and stuff like from loads of different loads of different things if you love, i'm gonna well if you love anything really it's all the things that i love if you love strictly if you love drag queens drag race we've got all them on we theater we cover loads of theater stuff um at the minute with all wherever it is so if you love all of that and if there's that also as well if anyone wants you know i'm all i'm open if people want me to try and get guests on the show you know because we we contact people to come on the breakfast show and different things and we're also if there's any topics that people want us to cover and stuff i know recently like i said we've covered adhd we've covered conversion therapy which is another tricky one obviously with it being lgbt history month um different things like that um you know i do a lot of things for being a trans ally as part of the community so we all will always have stuff on like that because it's it's another thing for you know if you don't know about something you can maybe listen to an interview and get something from it the same as maybe mm. I can when I'm interviewing a professional footballer because I don't really, you know, aside from different things. So it's it's good enough for me, but like it's just as good for me as what I'm trying to say as well. But um, yeah, loads of different things. If there's a guest that you want on, and that's a gorgeous, obviously, on a Saturday, seven till ten. Um, I think just have a look at my my Instagram, I would say. It's my name backwards, so it's at Westwood Dan. Um and you like you said it's 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 all work so there's nothing personal on there and it's it, it'll be like things that i've got coming up or you know like you said guess that and where you can where you can catch up because if you have missed the show you can listen on catch up but then they're also available on the website as well the gorgeous radio website so you can listen to if you go on there there's loads of i mean the craig the craig interviews on there if you you can like binge like 15 minutes you know like they're like little podcast little episodes so that's oh, good if you don't want to listen to the the news or me talking in between you can just listen to the mm -hmm. chats you know um i'll add everything into the show notes and um yeah so thank you so much for You're very welcome. joining me and i've had a lovely chat i think i could probably chat you all night um, you. Well, <laughs> so thank you so much that's nice quality that's nice of you to say you're very welcome <laughs>